Welcome to Revealing Conversations with Petra Nicole. Once again, here this morning on the beautiful Louis River in Woodland, Washington, coming to you today with a very special guest, Georgina Eggleston, a dear friend of mine and a very, very important person for people who are going through grief. And I'm going to read you her bio right now. Georgina Eggleston is a certified body-mind synergist with a 20-plus year private practice specializing in grief and anxiety. In less than four years, five people in her family died. Thus began her journey through complicated grief. Georgina is the author of A New Morning, Discovering the Gifts in Grief, the memoir of her journey through grief. No stranger to the stage, Georgina teaches classes, speaks at conferences, and is a frequent TV talk show host. Welcome, Georgina. It's so nice to see you. I've really missed you. <laughs> I've missed you too, Petra. Oh, it's so good to be here with you. I'm, I, I just uh, ran into a friend of mine in Roseburg who read your book, um, uh, the new morning discovering the gifts in grief and he said it was one of the best books he, he's ever read oh thank uh, you so much cancer and he lost um, an adopted child and uh, so he said it was absolutely brilliant you touched on things that most people never bring up and so that brings me to the first question that i have for you that we know loss is a natural part of life and that grief is a universal consequence of loss what is grief and have you seen an increase in your private practice since the outbreak of the coronavirus? Well, Petra, grief is a process. It's a process that breaks us open and it breaks us open to really navigate all the emotions that come up through the guidance of the body. And it brings us to that place of inner stillness within us. Grief is also an emotion, but it's like an umbrella with many emotions hanging down from the spines of the umbrella. There's anxiety and there's sadness, there's anger, there's despair. All, there's a wide range of emotions with grief, but really and truly not one of us gets off this planet, Petra, without experience a loss that results in grief. So that's why I say, you know, it's a universal consequence of loss. Mm -hmm. So you went through a, a horrific journey. I, I remember you telling me the story about your son and how he died mm -hmm. when he was only 14 years old. Yes. Uh, can yes. you uh, tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So. My son Reed was one of those charismatic, bigger than life kids. He was handsome, athletic, artistic, and quite the mathematician. And he had a heart for helping others. Well, one Friday night, he and his girlfriend were upstairs in his bedroom. They added vodka to their orange juice and then went to a basketball game. And when they left the house, the effects of the alcohol were not evident to us. We quickly got a call from the school saying, we think Reed's been drinking, come now. And we went, of course. So we gave our permission for Reed to have a breathalyzer test because what I knew is that alcohol abuse ran in our family. So I thought, all right, he's young and if this is the path he's stepping on, we need to support him now. Well, he failed the test, was suspended from school for three days, and kicked off the basketball team for the rest of the year. He was a freshman. So when Reed was upset, you left him alone. The last time I saw him, Petra, his head was in his hands. The shame already too much to bear. I said to him, Reed will get through this. Normally, I would have taken his hands down from his face and said, we'll get through this. But I only said it to him 
because lately when he'd been upset, you, you left him alone. So I went to the room next door to comfort his girlfriend and Reed ran home and literally lost face. He bent over a shotgun and oh. killed himself. So that was on a Friday night and the next morning, Petra, he died. We, we took him off, you know, life support. The transplant team had gotten there to harvest his organs. So I went home from the hospital and as I stood watching the sun come up, I said, just like the sun comes up every morning, I'll move through this grief. But Petra, I didn't have a clue as to how that was going to happen. I'd already experienced the grief of my brother Mark who died by suicide, my mother who died from a brain tumor, my father-in-law who died from a lengthy illness, my dad who dropped dead from a heart attack. And this was yet another sudden death in our family. But because I was so guided, I ended up beginning a training program later that year. This happened in January, so November 1st, All Saints Day, I started this training program. And it was a mind, it's a mind-body synergy where you listen to the body's metaphors. You learn to hear their messages and there's all kinds of guidance there. And that, Petra, was what allowed me to move through my grief. So were there moments where you felt so devastated? I mean, I know that, you know, we've, we've all gone through grief. My mother died. I found her dead in the kitchen one morning. Yes. I, was in, I had a coma when I was nine and a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had moments where I didn't really want to live anymore. Did you go through that? Yes, yes. What I've learned is pain is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets out of this world without pain, but suffering is optional. So I do what I do today because I didn't have the tools to really move through the suffering. Mm -hmm. And there were times, yes, when I literally, before I started the training mm -hmm. in those months, I had faith. I had family and friends, but I really wanted to leave the planet, but I had to stay because my son Vincent was a senior in high school that year. Yes, and I met Vincent and uh, did some mm -hmm. bad feedback with him. He's such a fantastic person. And he he is. Is. So, so Georgina, my next question would be, um, how has your business been impacted as of late doing grief work through, since COVID-19? Like what's the going on? What's happened is the anxiety is shot through the roof. It was yeah. really interesting, Petra, because in January of 2019, all these people started showing up with anxiety. And I know that anxiety is a kind of grief. It was really, really interesting because after Reed died in 1998, we ended up closing our healthcare business because of of a turn in circumstances. We moved and to another state and I started my practice as a mind-body therapist. Well, my husband and I had been in relationship for 40 years and married for 37, but we grew like two trees in different directions spiritually. And there was an issue that had nothing to do with Reed that began in 1988 and 20 years later had not resolved itself. So it was time for us to actually make this an official split. And so we got divorced. Petra, I got married the week after I graduated from college. Oh my I've never lived on my own. But you know how they say, Georgina, it's, it's, it's um, grief. Like the biggest blows in someone's life would be a death, a move, uh, a divorce, 
in an illness. And That's right, the diagnosis. In a diagnosis. So you had literally the move to divorce and on top of it, your son's death. Right. You, know but, you got through this. I really but what know. happened, Petra, mm -hmm. is that when I was divorced, I experienced anxiety as my grief. See, I never lived alone. And I didn't know how much I had given to that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, that anxiety resulted in waking up at two or three in the morning and not being able to go back to sleep, mm -hmm. feeling so afraid of the future. When I pasteurized and looked at the past and futurized and looked at the present or the future, oh, yeah. I, I was a mess. Yeah. So when these people started showing up in my office, it was like, oh, yeah, this is grief. And I haven't seen it since 2008 when I was divorced. Yeah. So 11 years later, it shows up, and now it's there in spades. Because, as you know and I know, the whole planet is in fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so as a reason, slice we're in the mystery to evolve from all of this people are so afraid so with the anxiety that shows up in my office we really go to the body so that the body can guide people through the anxiety of their grief patron fascinating so um i have people that are doing very well in this. So some of my clients, maybe because they have been given tools that they're mm -hmm. using through Reiki and through self-healing, meditation, yoga, there are a lot of people that are feeling really, really, really good right now. Yes. The frequency is also changing on the planet. Absolutely. We're looking at a, a, a different vibration right now altogether. But I think that people that are holding on to the old uh, system, the old model, the old matrix are not doing so well. And those are the people we really, really want to reach. And that's why I'm doing this channel, uh, this YouTube channel, is to bring people like you on to that platform to say, hey, you know, there are tools out there. So tell me a little bit, what are the tools that you are giving people right now that you're feeling are helpful that they can run with and say, okay, I can, I think I can get on top of this anxiety. I know you've, you've given me some sessions. You and I have exchanged sessions and you've done biofeedback with me. I've done your synergy work with you and you are an amazing, amazing practitioner and healer. And so I would love for you to speak on that subject. Thank you. I'm so glad you asked because the tools are working quickly. I'm so thrilled because I say my job, Petra, is to work myself out of a job. And that is indeed <laughs> what's happening. Eight, nine sessions and people are out the door and they have discovered their inner stillness. They have stepped into their power and their consciousness is different. So I'm going to go back to my very first experience of the most powerful tool that came to me in the hands of Alana Rubenfeld. I was in the training and, uh, with Alana Rubenfeld, who created the Rubenfeld Synergy Method. And she came to my right knee. She put her hands around my knee and said, what are you noticing in the space between my hands? And I said, clouds. Mm -hmm. And the clouds are very, very dark. And she said, tell me more. And with that one invitation, the clouds began to dissipate, Petra. They got lighter. Mm -hmm. And there was this beautiful amethyst mountain peak that appeared in my right knee. Mm -hmm. And the base of the mountain was black granite. And what I didn't realize is we'd gone into the collective unconscious of Jung, the Akashic records. We'd gone beyond the consciousness of three dimensional mm -hmm. into four or five. Mm -hmm. Because 
I needed grounding mm -hmm. as that woman whose son had died, who still wanted to leave the planet. Mm -hmm. So what's happening now with people who come into the office, Petra, is I invite them when they, they tell me their story and the emotion comes up, all right? Mm -hmm. And it's anxiety, it's sadness, it's despair, whatever it is. And then I will say to them, all right, now notice what are you feeling in your body? And it takes them, Petra, out of their head and into their body. And for some people, it's really, really difficult. But because I have done this a long time, I am see either on Zoom or there in the office with them, I see the tightness in their body, where it was hard to swallow, where a shoulder is up or back, I can just, and feel it as well. And so if they can't scan that and find the ache, the pain, the sensation, the tightness, then I'll guide them to it with a question. Oh, what do you notice? in your shoulder there. And then I invite them to place their hand on that part of their body and notice what it's like to contact themselves. Because you see, we've got bodies right here, right now, that are so powerful and helpful, but we don't know their language. And when we come into contact with ourselves, because everybody's touch deprived right now, Pedra, it, it really brings us to a new awareness. And so I invite them to notice, okay, what are you noticing now in the space beneath your hand? And everybody replies. Sometimes it's an image. Sometimes it's a word like tightness. Sometimes it's like, oh, this frenzied energy. Whatever it is, it is. That's their truth in that moment because the body tells the truth. Yeah. So then what happens is I will invite them to hang out because after we recognize the grief in whatever shape or form it is in the body, we can then begin to relate to it. And that's what they're doing right here. Mm -hmm. And so I will then ask them, what state are you in? Which brings them into an awareness of emotion, physical, mental. And then I will say to them, how old do you feel? Because what you and I both know, Petra, is grief brings up the deepest parts of ourselves longing to be healed. So they might feel three years old or 10 or 16 or 20, whatever it is it is. And then I will say, so in this state as a 20 year old, now listen and notice, does this place in your body have a message for you. And 90% of the time, people do get a message. And then there'll be a shift in their body. And I'll say to them, what did you notice? And they may share with me the message, or they may open their eyes quickly and say, the pain is gone, the tightness is gone, the knot is gone. And so that's what I am here to offer your viewers today. Mm -hmm. That simple process. Recognize where the ache or pain or tightness is in the body. Relate to it with touch or deep awareness or both. And then simply notice how old am I feeling in this moment? And without any judgment, Curiosity and discovery are the key to doing this process. Mm -hmm. And then ask it, do you have a message for me? Because the body always tells the truth. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. And then what happens, Petra, is people 
people's energy is renewed. They can come back and be in the present moment. And the whole intention of what we do together is to realign with their heart's purpose. Because grief is a doorway to growth. It's a doorway to physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual growth. And after a big loss, be it the death of a dream, which are so many people on the planet are experiencing right now, the question that you and I have asked ourselves so many times is who am I now? Exactly. What's my purpose? What's my new direction? So um, what is the problem that you want people to know about loss? The problem approaching emotional pain of loss intellectually. Like, uh, you know, I do emotional processing through golden light meditation and I teach classes on this. And uh, sure. people intellectualize their grief, their loss, they explain it away, they tell the story, they get caught up in the story, they tell the story a thousand times. Right. I remember once where I told the story over and over and over and then eventually, you know, was introduced to this, to golden light meditation and emotional processing work. You know, that was maybe 20 something years ago or more, uh, 25 years ago, and was able to move beyond that where I was stuck. Because what I see with most of my clients is that they get stuck in the story. Yes. Isn't that what you see also? What you That's right. Yeah. The, the, the problem is people approach the emotional pain of loss intellectually just like you said and that's what we're doing with the virus right now instead of being in that place of, of really realizing okay what's the emotion i'm feeling right now what state am i in how old am i feeling and going into the body and listening and and asking for that inner guidance that's the problem we can't think our way through grief, Petra. So, do you know how, what do you think we collectively, all, all, you know, I always tell people when you're stuck in the story, you're the director of your own movie. So yes. if you want a different movie, you need to write a new script. Exactly. But what has to happen is, oh, excuse me, what? Do you think that humanity, why humanity collectively has created this? This dark night of the soul. Okay. for humanity mm -hmm. is for us to go down into the shadow mm -hmm. to really ask the truth mm -hmm. for each of ourselves we each have to do inner work and Petra, you and i have done a lot yeah. but i found this week my own consciousness breaking open and elevating mm -hmm. to a new mm -hmm. state and place partly with the people I was with, partly simply because that's what I've been intending for myself. Mm -hmm. So to circle back to your question, what's the purpose of this? Why has humanity created this? It's so each of us can recognize the truth that wait a minute, when we're in our ego, which is what we believe is what I do, what I have, and what other people think of me. This yeah. is Wayne Dyer's definition of ego. We're edging good out. And it's all about out there. And we've got to come in here. Grief is an inside job. I love that you said we're edging good out, we're not edging God out. <laughs> That's right, we're edging good out. That's the ego, edging good out. Yeah. Good out. Well, mm -hmm. I I believe you know I, I went through the dark night of the soul. So did that? Did you? Mm -hmm. I went mm -hmm. through it when I lived in India, or right after I got back from India. You know, meditating so many hours a day. Eventually, you get to that place where mm -hmm. you be just with yourself. And yes, I was young at that time, maybe in my early twenties, and feeling like the size of an ant and totally. Um, it, minuscule, you know, not necessary to stay on the planet. It's like, why am I here? Why am I even here? What am right. I doing here? Who am I? Who am I? As yes. a and I think yeah, that people, when you take away um, a long time ago, I met a woman who channeled St. Francis of Assisi. Her name was uh, Anne Hughes. 
and uh, she spoke about humanity in such a way of uh, us being too identified mater with materiality, with the external expression yes. of ourselves. And we are, we are, we are not material, we're energy bodies, we're light right. bodies. And, and I think this is just a wonderful invitation for humanity to come back to that knowledge, uh, which is um, much more felt, I feel, in places like India or Bali, you know, in yes. different cultures. But here, you know, when we are getting a kick out of watching, you know, what latest Gucci bag is out there or what uh, latest yeah. Maserati I can buy and mm -hmm. identify with that reality, it's, it's you know, we, we, are, we as, a, as, a, as a species, we have a long ways to go. <laughs> we really do. And as a culture in the United States, mm -hmm. you know, we're so outer oriented. Mm -hmm. And what this time in isolation has done mm -hmm. is it absolutely called us to come inside. <laughs> and sometimes we don't like what we find, the feelings that are there, you know, the fear that's there. But to deepen the, the question that you ask, what is the purpose of this? I really believe it's to go down and to determine, to discern, to recognize, to relate to, and then to bring up for healing the root cause of fear and greed and all of that negativity so we can move, I call it the energy elevator, so we can move up here yep. into love. But we've got, we can't write the new story, Petra, until we really look at what I'm called to do what I'm called to believe differently, because our stories are based on our beliefs. Mm -hmm. And there's that exterior cultural influence and our family of origin influence. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really are, are here now to look at and to see if people in the United States are going to starve to death, oh wow. Well, I, I don't think we'll starve to death. I think we hope not. <laughs> I'm expecting not. I, oh, no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to be teaching people how to live on 50 cents a day. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what needs to happen. And I'm going. I'm doing a video today how to make stinging nettle de pesto from the forest and how to sprout for 50 cents a day. And you get all your, or most of your nutrients through it. Great. But Petra, before we go on, I want to tell you the story of when, after we moved from Nebraska, mm -hmm. I was in total fear mm -hmm. because we had no money. So how are we going to eat week? Mm -hmm. And I want all of the people to hear is how much energy I wasted when you know better, you do better. But I didn't know that worry, doubt, and fear were keeping me from even more good. And it was amazing because every week there was always food and it came from unique places, my own creativity. It was amazing, Petra. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. People in the United States do not have to starve to death. People nowhere have to do that. So good for you. I can hardly wait to see the 50 cents a day. <laughs> How to live on 50 cents a day. <laughs> you know, when my son was a uh, little, uh, he was a uh, raised vegetarian. So he never had meat until he was 13 years old. And then, of course, you know, we moved to Eugene, Oregon, peer pressure. He started also getting these uh, McDonald's meals. And he would be uh, so excited out about his Big Mac and, you know, fitting in with uh, the other kids in the school. And um, I would go to the health food store and get a bag of vegetables, you know, for the same amount of money that he spent on his burgers and fries and milkshake. And I said, okay, so let's compare prices. And then mm -hmm. let's compare nutrients 
and, and uh, you know, he, he was always uh, so upset when I did this. But the funny thing is, even though, you know, I had to tell him over and over and over and over to go and, and eat healthier. Now, when I come to his house after all these years, and he's 27 years old now, now he polices me on what I eat and what I <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny <laughs> it is funny my son is doing the same thing <laughs> oh my god they're telling us what to eat and what not to eat but i've been sprouting a lot i've been sprouting lentil sprouts and azuki and i've been sprouting uh buckwheat and stuff like that and and, and people really love it but let's get back to the conversation um what do griefing people want to feel better they want to be heard, mm -hmm. they want to be held, mm -hmm. and they want people to stay with them in the place of emotion. So the worst thing you can say to a grieving person is, how are you? Oh, Instead, yeah. oh. how's your grief is a much better thing to say. Yeah. The other thing is when a grieving person tells you their story, for you to reflect back the part of that story that was most touching to you yeah. and frame it that way. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That's the worst. Yeah. I was so touched when you said da da da, because in that way they know that they have absolutely been heard. Mm -hmm. And the other thing grieving people want you to do if their grief is the result of a death of a pet or a person mm -hmm. or a dream is tell me a story about and then fill in the blank. Because as you said earlier in our conversation, you needed to tell your story over and over again. I'm doing a naming ceremony on Memorial Day evening and everyone's being invited to bring a candle and with the name of the person they want to remember. And part of the invitation is, they will not be forgotten when we say their name. So that's what's so important for everybody to really realize you're not, they may cry as they're telling you about that person, but it's a wonderful opportunity. Well, it gets crowded in my living room because, you know, I feel my mother and my father and, and my grandfather sometimes literally in my living room having conversations with me. And I have these sort of invisible conversations with dead people. <laughs> in fact, I was a lot closer with my grandfather after he died. And I was always going to the cemetery when I was in Germany to speak with both my mother and my grandfather. And, and now, of course, my father mm -hmm. as well. But I feel, um, you know, when, when, if you're medium, for example, that uh, yes. has, uh, and not a small. <laughs> that has access to the other side and they are talking to people constantly. I mean, I've been with mediums in my life quite a bit, especially one of them, you know, she's like, we need to leave now. We need to leave now. I said, what's going on? What's going on? Your mother and father are here and they're pulling on my skirt and they really need to talk to you. And it's like, this is so exciting to me. And there are some wonderful mediums. And just to the audience, you know, if you've lost someone recently through uh, to, you know, the coronavirus or something, just know that there is no death. There really is no death. We just change bodies, we're still here. Uh, and uh, I've, I've had a near-death experience. And so I don't really believe that we die. We just take, off our garb, our body, and we move on to the spirit world and we dip down into the physical world and we visit the people we love. And so I never really feel alone. And, and, and that is probably why I like to physically be alone so that I can interact with all the spirits around me. You know, and yes. have conversations, full on conversations. And if you get really still, like you've told me many stories about your son and how he speaks to you. Absolutely. And it's really interesting, Petra, because one of the things that I've learned about grief now is that people experience grief as separation until they realize it's not separation, it's elevation. 
Mm -hmm. And that's why I say you're not broken by grief. You're broken open. Broken open to experience emotions through the guidance of the body to arrive at inner stillness, which then allows you this next dimension of connection. Because people can go beyond in this body, like you and I have experienced, we can go beyond the five senses. And that's what I tell all of my grieving clients, is that when we wean our eyes from that gap in the air and return to the hearth of our heart, they've been waiting there for us. And it's so wonderful to have that guidance. And it was so neat because one of the things I discovered early in the grief process is the remembering of object permanence, which was one of the things I learned in my training as a speech language pathologist. Every single one of us from the time we're six months to maybe 18, go through this period where we believe our mother is lost when she goes into the other room. Mm -hmm. But we then arrive at the place, oh no, she's just in the other room. And that's what happens in grief. They've simply gone to the next room. And when we're still mm -hmm. and invite them to come, oh wow, there, there were all these signs from Reed. But I was in such complicated grief, Petra, that it was almost like I couldn't get enough, even though I knew every single time. I could feel the difference in my heart. I could feel my consciousness rising for an instant, but then I'd crash back down. So that's why I do what I do, to simply companion people through this because it takes them to a new level of consciousness. And boy, is it great, isn't it, to get all of the messages from the other side? It is great. So Georgina, my door is open behind me, as you can see. And I yes. have these birds that are singing so loudly. Can you hear them? No? I have, and there was a hummingbird as you were speaking about your son and about grief just flying by here, zipping by here, back and forth. <laughs> the other day I had a hummingbird in the house I, I, and I had my phone in my hand, so I recorded the whole thing on how to get a hummingbird out of your house. That's great, Petra. <laughs> it was such a blessing. So you say people in the U.S. are death phobic, grief phobic and emotion phobic. What do you mean by that? What I mean is here in the United States, we're so afraid to talk about death. So that's one of the things. Death is in our face right now with the condition of the world. People are grief phobic as well. It's like, oh no, I don't want to go there. I don't even want to be with a grieving person. It's contagious. I might catch grief, which is absolutely ridiculous. Because, and then emotion phobic. And that's the thing, Petra, that as I've been sitting back, realizing in our culture, it's really okay to be at sporting events. It's really okay to be at music events. But unless you've got positive emotions, mm -hmm. eh, we don't want them in our mm -hmm. culture. We want everything to just kind of stay nice and smooth and even, but as you and I know, and every person watching this conversation of ours, the richness is in the emotions. The richness is underneath the surface. So that's what I mean. It's just a real invitation to ask yourself, am I afraid to die? That's the what and why. And sit with this, because you and I aren't Petra. We know that it's simply a grand transition. It's the next becoming, just like the butterfly. Grief, as I've said over and over this morning, mm -hmm. is an opportunity, it's a doorway to growth. No, we don't like it, but it's that opportunity. And the emotion phobic, oh my gosh, 
Sometimes I am in three or four different emotions, Petra, in the course of 10 minutes. But it's great because that's what makes me human. And emotion is simply energy coming to us. It's no big deal. It's nothing to be afraid of. It, it, they enrich our lives. Well, you know, in Star Trek, when uh, Captain Picard, you know, his best friend was Data. And Data's whole mission was to experience emotion. And so, you know, we don't want to be androids. I mean, uh, emotion is a wonderful nope. thing. Um, you know, it is. It's, a, it's, it's great. I, I, I entertain myself throughout the day, like you, with my own emotions. So, you know, if I Absolutely. get like, put somewhere and I get upset or in traffic or whatever, whatever happens, or, you know, I see something on the news or, you know, that mm -hmm. triggers mm -hmm. me. Uh, it's, it, it's great. If you, if you could watch yourself like an eagle flight from above and you just become the observer, then there you have the answer. Absolutely. And really and truly, uh, research has been done that show that healthy emotions are only 90 seconds long. But it's when we start spinning around in the story, when we start judging ourselves for feeling this way, that's when the emotions then loop around. And get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. I was talking to two people last night. One was in Texas and one was in California. And they were each looping in the, they were both in the loop of longing. And so we talked about that because it's a natural place for grieving people to go. Mm -hmm. But what I said to them is, emotion lives in the body and thoughts create feelings. So when you're thinking about that person and begin missing them, what feeling do you have? So I made the suggestion that they allow themselves every hour, five minutes to be in the loop of longing. Mm -hmm. And then it's as if that loop of longing is put aside, maybe in a parking lot, and they, they come back and live then for the next 55 minutes and then allow themselves to go back there. And that creates that awareness, Petra, that is so important because we move through grief. I call it ace. We can ace our way through grief with awareness, mm -hmm. connection, and then that exploration of the question, okay, who am I now? What am I feeling? How old am I? What state am I in? All of those things so that we move then, as you and I have experienced, into the expansion of consciousness. That is brilliant. Beautifully said. <sighs> so I think, uh, Warrigan, um, the, um, are, are the rules lifted yet? No, 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 not that I'm aware of. In fact, it was interesting, Petra. I live in Portland in John's Landing. So every morning I walk over to the Willamette River and I take off my shoes and I feel my feet on the earth and I lean my back against a beautiful birch tree. And it's so wonderful to actually feel that the universe has my back in this beautiful tree. Well, this morning when I arrived on my path, there was a huge sign that I hadn't seen before. COVID, playgrounds closed, walkways closed, picnic areas closed. I don't know where it came from, but that's what I saw. So that's the, that's the background for my answer to your question. <laughs> but I thought we're at the end of all this. I, I did too. Why the signs are up now. I don't know. Yeah, four weeks late. <laughs> I guess. Or the, it could be that with my awareness, I never noticed the sign. <laughs> so what did you do is the question. Did you lean against the tree or did you? Absolutely. Absolutely. For you. The tree yeah. was calling you. Was Absolutely. Calling and looking out over the river. <laughs> What'd you say? 
I said, the tree said, come on over, Georgina, and lean up against me, please. <laughs> yes, because when I do that and look out across the river, then I ask the question for the day, what is mine to do? Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful to have of that answer then come through. Mm -hmm. Well, gosh, it's so good to see you. And uh, we have to get together soon. And yes, have a, a, a chat about um, what we're going to do in this new year in a positive way. I know you've invited me into your center. What is the name of that center again? New Thought Center for Spiritual Living. So people can find it at newthoughtcsl.org. And it's really neat because every Sunday morning we gather for a 45-minute gathering. And then after that, there is a Zoom call, which is really neat because it's questions and answers about the experience that we've all gone through so we can deepen that. And that's the place where on Deep Dive Monday, the Memorial Day naming service will be held. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually, that's so great that you just shared that. Do you want to also share your website and how people can get yes, to with you? Yes, certainly. So by going to beyondyourloss.com, you'll arrive at a place where you may send me a contact. And on the website, there are a couple of videos. There's a great deal of information for navigating your way through grief. And one of the things I'm most delighted about is that under the second video on the homepage, when you click on that, there's a grief assessment. Petra, it was amazing last night. The person from California said, I was guided to take this assessment and it was mine. And it came through Kaiser. I was stunned and delighted because people don't realize that grief is multifaceted. So it looks at and gives you an opportunity to really question, oh, what are the physical, emotional, cognitive, and behavioral aspects of my grief. And there's four questions at the bottom of it, Petra. It's all free. But the, the questions are always what I see as a therapist as that person's way through grief, which, as you and I know, we all have our wisdom within us. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here today with me. And You're welcome. Can't wait thank to you. See you and wish you a marvelous afternoon and evening. And uh, let's stay in close touch. Absolutely. I'll see you at the river. See you at the river. Namaste. Thank you, Georgina. Namaste, Bye. Peter. Thank you. Bye.